Hello, everyone. I'm Denise Boggs, and I want to welcome you as we journey together through Healing the Heart. Okay, this is our second session on breaking the cycle of performance orientation. I want to tell you, it'll change your life because every area where you're striving, trying to be good enough in some area, okay, then it can affect you, even your physical health. But let's look at this, okay? Uh, I said earlier that a performance-oriented person is always thinking, always planning, always, always counting and measuring, counting and measuring, okay? If you find yourself always telling people how many things, how many people, how much you accomplished, how many people you just spoke to, how many people were in this, in this church service, how many were, liked your Facebook post, all that, how many. The counting and measuring, it's not that there's anything wrong with you counting, but you've got to understand that if you're counting and measuring, then you can't enter into rest because a performance-oriented person always has to go to the next level. Always, always, I, I got to beat the, the level before. I got to do, I have to have more, okay? Now, where is this rooted? Where is it rooted? I got to do more. I got to do more. Where is it rooted? Okay, I'm going to share with you where it's rooted, the restless soul. And I'm, I'm going to be reading from some things in this booklet on breaking the cycle. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. Makes me lie down. You got to stop long enough to recognize your own cycle. You have to stop. Okay. Stop counting, measuring. Counting and measuring. And he said this in the 23rd Psalm, it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters to restore my soul. Restore your soul. Okay. In our soul, there has to be rest in your soul. Rest in your soul. Okay. And if you don't stop and allow the Lord to bring that rest to you, then you're counting and measuring and not even aware that this restlessness is kind of like the ocean. Okay. It never stops. It never stops. It's always moving, always moving, always moving. There's no rest. It's a restlessness. Okay. And be still is what God said to David. Be still. Psalms 46, 10, David even writes it down. Be still and know. I'm God. Be still and know. Okay. What part of your soul needs to know the love of God? What part of your soul? Because that's the restless part. Performance orientation can begin in early childhood. And I'm going to tell you the story of David, okay? Not David the shepherd boy, David the performer. He didn't know he was a performer until he came to a Healing the Heart retreat and I've changed his name, but he came and he said, I, I can't ever turn my, my mind off. I can't stop. I can't take a vacation. He was in ministry. His family was suffering. He couldn't rest in the evening. He couldn't rest to take a vacation. He could never have a day off because there's so much to do, so much to do. And he thought it was godly because there's so many souls to save, okay? Okay. But what about his own household? He wasn't taking care of his own family because he couldn't take the time to even sit quietly and rest and hear about their day at the end of the day. He couldn't. He couldn't rest. And so as I began to ask him about his family, I want to tell you a story. It's in the book. His dad left before he was born. His mom was a single mom, and he loved baseball. 
So when he'd go to a baseball game, all the other boys, their dad would pat him on the back. Good job. Good, good, good home run. Good, good son. You did a good job. But David never heard. Good job. Never heard it. He'd walk through the gate, hearing all the boys getting good job from a voice that was their father's voice. So all the way home, driving home, he's sitting there counting what he did wrong, what he didn't accomplish. He didn't steal base on second. He didn't, he didn't. So as soon as he and his mom got home, he'd go right back to practicing. All the other boys could go in and rest, have dinner and rest because they had heard good job. They had received affirmation from their earthly father. What affirmation does, now hear me, it settles, okay? It's an internal settling of your soul. Good job, affirmation. God gave Jesus affirmation. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased before he did the first thing, okay? We always have to look to scripture. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That's him saying, good job. Even before he hit a home run or did anything in ministry or had the first miracle. Okay, let's go back to David now, David. So David would practice and practice until it's dark. He'd finally go in. Next day, he'd wake up, practice and practice. So he was striving to hear a voice he would never hear. Good job, good job. And what affirmation does is it's an internal time clock so that you can rest. You accomplished what you need to do in that day. And when, when the Lord gave me this picture through this, this man, David, that he didn't have an internal cutoff switch. There wasn't a time clock. Not, there wasn't a time to rest. Ecclesiastes says there's a time for everything under the sun. There's a time. But he didn't have it set. He couldn't stop. He couldn't rest. And he's, he's striving to hear a voice he would never hear. He would never hear his father say, good job, son. I'm so proud of you. Good job. He might hear a senior pastor, a co-worker, somebody say, hey, wow, you got a lot done. But that wasn't the voice he was listening for, Okay. It was unhealed area. He's waiting on a voice to affirm what he's accomplished. And so his healing journey was amazing. What it did to bring rest to his soul so that he could end his day entering into the rest of the Lord and be there for his family and enjoy fellowship and enjoy vacations and and because he's not counting and measuring his own worth of what he's accomplished by everyone else's accomplishments. He could have peace in his soul of who he was as his heavenly father's son because he didn't hear it from his earthly father's son. Now, that takes some time to heal. Let me just say this before I close. Your internal structure of striving to accomplish something can start all the way back at nine, ten years old. And you're not aware that it's been there all that time. Okay? You're not aware of it, but the only indicator is, is the rest in your soul at the end of the day? Or are you frustrated at what you didn't get accomplished? Okay. If you want to hear more, Tune in again. If Living Waters has been a blessing to you and you would like to help support this ministry, you can give on our website, livingwatersministry.com slash donate or text any amount to 84321. We have additional resources for you to continue on your journey to healing in our online bookstore. You can click the link in description.